In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an example problem from our titration lab, and then I'll go over some of the questions, and that's really it. So we're going to do the example one uh, for this one. So on a separate sheet of paper, you're going to want to show your work. So it's pretty simple. Uh, so my let's say my initial reading was 0.5 and my final reading was 3.5. So what this means is that out of the burette, I allowed 3.0 liters, uh, milliliters of acid to come out to neutralize the base. And now let's say these were my base readings, I would get 1.7 milliliters of base, which canceled out or neutralized my acid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the titration formula. MABA equals MBVB. Now the thing we have to worry about is the number of OHs and the number of Hs that could be given off by the acid in the base. In this case, HCl only has one H, so it only gives off one H, and NaOH only has one OH, so it doesn't really matter. If we forgot to do this step, it would be fine because these numbers are both gonna be one. So that's something to worry, that's something we don't have to really worry about here. So here's what I know. I know the concentration of my molarity is 0.1. I know the amount of acid I used was three milliliters. I know the concentration of my base was unknown. So I don't know how my concentration of my base, that was X, and the volume of my base was 1.7. So now I'm just gonna multiply these together and solve for X. And I get point one seven or well it rounds to 0.18 so we'll go out to two decimals so 0.18 molar NaOH so for this one I would get 0.18 molar and the base is NaOH and that's all you're doing you're doing the setup and that's it we're using the same acid for all three trials, we're using the same base for all three trials. The acid concentration is all known. The base concentration is all um, unknown. So that's what we're gonna be solving for every time. You're gonna use the pictures in the lab to read the burettes before and after and then subtract to get the amount that was used. And you're gonna do that for the acid trials. You're gonna do that for the base trials. And then you're going to calculate using the titration formula, the concentration of the base. It's that simple. Now, next question. So the question's on the bottom. How reproducible were, you, were your results? Meaning, trial one, trial two, trial three. Ignore the example, because I just made those numbers up. Uh, trial one, trial two, and trial three. Were you getting similar concentrations for your base? If you were, then they were reproducible. That means if you did it a fourth time, you would be confident to say, I'm gonna get an answer that's very similar to the first three trials. If all three trials are all over the place and there's no consistency to them, then you would say they're not reproducible because every time I do it, I get a different or a wildly different answer. If you get something that's really close together, that's reproducible. Um, which indicator was the most accurate? We're not gonna do this question because we didn't use indicators um, for the virtual lab. Uh, when we do this in person, we will use three different indicators for the three different trials. Um, what's in the beaker at the end of the titration? If you go to your notes, that information is all there. Define the following, that's easy. And then these, are, these next three are three more calculations that I want you to show the work. Now the thing to remember is the acid is NaOH each time, which gives off 1OH. But I'm making, I'm using all the same numbers, but what I'm doing is I'm changing the base, or I'm sorry, the acid. The base is all the same, it's NaOH. I'm changing the acid so that I give off 1H, gives off 2Hs, gives off 3Hs. So that's going to affect the titration equation and change your answer, even though I'm using the same numbers for all three problems. So be aware of that. Now, when we get to the back, we are going to do your uh, molarity. Uh, this is where this calculation would go. You would just take all this and plug it in right there. That's the molarity calculation for that. And then you're going to do the percent error calculation. So the percent error for this is going to be you're going to show me the work. We're going to want the percent error. Our measured for our example is 1.8, and then our accepted value 
I'm actually not 100% sure of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the math on your three trials that I gave you in the lab and then um, give you an accepted value based off that. I believe the accepted value, I'm not even going to take a guess because I have to do the math first, but I will include the accepted value in the lab. Um, I'll, I'll include it in the notebook. And then once you know the accepted value, you're going to use that same accepted value for all three trials. And then your actual answer to the trial will be the measured. You're going to solve for your percent error every time.